Hey guys, welcome to the channel IF 4.0. This is Ajay. So now we will be looking at another parameter in the task executor that is operators. We have already uh, understood the dispatcher and task executors in our previous video. If you haven't gone through it, you can go through it in the link uh, given in the description. So now we will be beginning with the operator. So today's uh, video will be on the task executors based on operators. So what we will be doing is we will understand where where operators can be used, how we can use multiple operators and also we will understand what are all those different parameters where the operators can be utilized. So these are the same like the statistics and the templates and the visuals are same as if that are for all the objects into the flexion. So what additional here is, is we have a personal visual tab here. So from here you can select what type of that uh, person should be. If you select female military, you can check out. So we have that as object as female military. So depending on what type of simulation you do or what environment of simulation you are going to do, you can select that part. So basically this is on the part of shape. This is on the skin texture. So the flexim has included many of such objects and you can see this is a zombie. So there are a lot many different creative skin tones where the operators or you can customize it. So the person visuals are customizable using this tab in this flexim for the operators. Then another thing comes as the operator tab itself. So this is the main tab for the operator. So basically what you can do is with this property, you can specify whether it needs to do animations. Animations means uh, whether it need to walk or whether it need to stand or walk loaded, those stuff you can specify here. So whenever I, uh, I, this operator is going on ideal state, you can specify what type of activities that operator should do, whether it should stand or do another shake hands. There are a lot of another animations inbuilt into the flexim. You can select those from this drop down list for walking. Also, you can put if you walk, you on the if the operator is in walking state, you can assign what of animations that operator can do. So this is very basic. Depending on your requirement, you can customize it. Then comes the task executor property for the operator, which specifies what like the capacity. This capacity means how many parts this operator should transfer at a time. We have load time for the operator and load time for the operator. We have their individual properties and the customizable features. You can go through it. Then we have break to which we have already seen the task executors. It is same for operator as well. Then we can go for the travel. This is the another property set for the operators. Here you can put the maximum speeds, acceleration, decelerations. Here you can change the units. When you click on the units, you can change the units as per requirements. Then we have the dispatcher properties. Dispatcher properties are basically assigned when one uh, we are using more than one operator. These properties are important so that the dispatcher will decide what type of task transfer should take place. So it can be on first available basis, round robin basis and so on. We have queue strategy. So this is basically this, this is queue strategy indicates it is the queues for the task sequences. So the task sequences are always assigned to the operator one behind another. So what type of strategy for queuing them should be enabled? you can select it from here. So prioritize based of distance. So if say two tasks are coming and one task is near to him, one task is after based on the distance prioritization, the operator will select the task which is near to him and he will do the task which is away from him at the last. So that a level of prioritization you can do here for queue strategy in the dispatching things. Then we have ports, input, output and the center ports as usual as we have for another objects. 
and then we have the triggers here on entry on prompt pick offset pick, place offset and so on there are many triggers you can use it as a requirement so these are the property sets for the operators basically uh, just let me know if you have any queries related to the simulation uh, into the comments below so that I can come live and answer your questions or we, I would prepare a new video for you to resolve your queries so what we will do now is we'll create a small model and where we will uh, customize the operators as per requirement put the inputs and check out how it works so come on let's begin so what we will do is we'll create uh, one type of the pad on the queue and from this processor we will use the operator for some of the things so what I will do is I will use enter arrival for the source with one second and I'll keep a buffer of two parts on the queue you'll use last and first out and we'll make processing time as two setup time as two and we'll use the operator for it okay so I am making use of this operator one for both of the task then what we'll do is we'll transfer this to say the part machine here so I'll show you two methods where we can use this and I will use three operators for the transferring as we can see the distance is longer so what I will do is I will make a center dist connection between dispatcher and then I'll connect this by a connection to all these operators for use transfer what we can do is we can use here first available okay and we'll make it use transport but we'll make the use of second center connection port which is our dispatcher connection so if you go in the processor and check what is our center connection to its dispatcher so this is another processor where uh, I require one minute of second cycle time no setup and nothing only the operator needs to put the part on it and then it will be delivered to the this thing and also what I'll do is I require that the operator should transfer the part from this uh, processor to the queue so I'll use operator here that's all now what I'll do is I'll reset and I will run the model now you can see in the so I'll stop the model so what you saw is this operator came from here to here and it was uh, doing setuping and then it was also doing processing so now currently if you see this processor is into the processing state and we have used the operator for processing so the operator will go in the utilized state so you can see the operator is in the utilized state the process the processor is processing and thus operator is on travel loaded so it is moving by loading this object now it is taking this object with himself towards the another processor and uh, you can see now this dispatcher will dispatch the task sequences based on first available basis as pass to strategy for the dispatcher is first available basis so what I can do is I'll keep on running so if you see the operator is going there yeah, I'll stop now so if you see once we our processing of the processor is done if the state goes to waiting for transport so it is waiting for the operator it will go into idle state operator 1 now the operator 3 will load the part from here he will unload the part on this processor and then uh, it will basically check on who needs to do what so you can see uh, we are having three operators but the dispatcher gave this task to this operator only because this was the nearest operator in the strategy so if you see the queue strategy sort by task sequence priority so basically the priority for the task sequence based on the part it is so the part needs to be delivered first so we are sending that part at the end so the operator nearer was supposed to pick this part and go take ahead so this operator in this strategy will take care of that part so no another operator will go and take care of that part if this operator is not available then only the another operator will go and work on it so if you see now I will run the model and this will go there and this will again come back here now operator 4 will be utilized but you can see the operator 4 is not utilized the reason is 
only two operators are sufficient because this operator works here and this operator is sufficient to take the part from this processor to this processor if you want to make that operator 4 also to be utilized there are a lot many customizable features you need to use triggers here or you can also change the strategy of the uh, processor so what you can do is pass to if you do it round robin if applicable your fourth operator will also be utilized see the fourth operator is now utilized so the strategy is like the pass to strategy is we have made us round robin in f applicable first available we'll make it we'll make a reset and we'll run so you can see so what you are watching here is the basic operator movement so you are not able to control how the operator is moving now you assign the logic to the operators that he should be standing here for processing and setuping another three operators should transfer the part from this to this and so on but watch see this operator is going into the diagonal direction it is having no constraint on the path basically it is selecting the shortest distance the diagonal straight line distance it is selecting but what if there is a constraint in the factory you cannot go straight line and all those stuff there will be pillars aside another machines aside you need to follow certain path so what are we going to do is we are going to use network node network node will see in the detail in the when we are understanding network nodes but the basics will still see here so I am connecting these network nodes by a connection I will do a connection from processor to this network node and then the operator all these three operators to that network node and then I will also ensure processor 2 to be connected there as a connection so the operator 4 is also connected so if you reset and run now you can see yeah I can understand now because what it is saying is the operator was assigned with a network node but here the operator needs to send the part which is away from the network mode or it is the destination is not connected to the network node so what I'll do is we'll connect the queue also for sake to the network node so if you reset and run now and if you check see the pa the operator moves perfectly in the assigned paths so now he is not moving in diagonally or any way he wants he will only move on the path prescribed to it so what we have done here is we have assigned the logics to the operator as well we have assigned constraints to the path it should follow it should not go anywhere or anyhow the operator it wants so we have assigned a constraint on the path movement and we have also assigned the task to the operators so if you see I'll slow down and we'll watch this beautiful view of the simulation. I will show, uh, make show connections off so that you will be able to see that. So this is how it's all going on. So thanks for watching the video. We'll come with the another video in the next session taking tasks uh, transporter in the task executors so please if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel share to the channel and stay tuned we'll come with another video for transporters into the task executors thank you